Hey, Mike. How's it going? How are you, Nick? Doing well, doing well. Um, thanks for everyone to join us. Thanks for hosting us here at Tortuga Bay. This is a project that I know from years ago. You started this in what year? Uh, we built our first phase in nine, oh, sorry, uh, in 2008 we delivered right. our first phase. And we had started on our second phase, but things changed in 2008. Yeah, certainly. And phase one is how many buildings, how many units? We have 33 residences in phase one. Those were all sold out while we were building phase one. So our 33 owners are living here and they're very excited to see that we're bringing on the rest of the project now. So phase two, when you designed this originally, what that would have been 2005, 2006? Yes, about then. And from the original plan to what it is going to be now, has it changed? It hasn't really. We're putting a little bit more modern touch on phase two, which is market driven. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, we have phase two and we actually have a phase three up at the boulevard, which will include a plaza, a commercial plaza as well. Um, for those that don't know, especially some of our newer Ronival agents here, um, either connected online or here in, pre in presence. Um, uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, you've been here for a long time, <laughs> but you're not from Cabo. Where no. are you from? I, I arrived from Vail, Colorado, actually. I was living in Vail, Colorado, and I was selling luxury real estate in Vail. And my boss gave me a ticket one day, and he said, fly down to San Jose del Cabo, at the end of the Baja Peninsula. And if you like it down there, do a little scouting around and maybe we'll build a resort down there. And they would send me down to manage the resort. So I arrived in, in 1986 and I stayed a couple days and I went home and I resigned. And I stole my boss's secretary. And oh, Diane and I moved down here. We got married later. and You married the secretary? I married his secretary. <laughs> I didn't know that. I said, you shouldn't have sent me down there. It's beautiful. And uh, I was in the timeshare business at the time. Okay. And that's when I decided uh, that was enough timeshare for me. And I started the first ever real estate company here, Baja Properties, in 1986. 86, so almost yes. 40 years ago. And there was nothing here. It was so early, if you will. We had no airport. We had no golf courses. There were no golf courses? There wasn't in a single golf hole on the peninsula in 1986. They were just starting the one in San Jose del Cabo, the nine hole at the Fonatour course. Right here, across the street. They were just knocking cactus down, and that just got me very excited about moving here. Wow. And I could see the potential. San Lucas just had a hole in the middle of town building the marina. It did not exist at the time. The airport was nothing more than a landing strip, no building. And we had one plane a day arrived from LA. <laughs> one plane a day. And yes. were there private planes flying in also? Not at that time, very rare. You know, the history of Baja was the private planes to the fishing hotels throughout the area, but nothing like we see today in what has taken place in, in, in the, the growth. So when I moved here, it was just the natural raw beauty that we're all attracted to here. And I've been fortunate enough to have a front row seat to watch the conversion from that into this world-renowned resort that we've developed here in Los Cabos. So when you started Baja Properties uh -huh. in the 80s, um, you um, have evolved quite a bit in your real estate career. You yeah. are the president of the MLS. And talk a little yes. bit about the MLS. I mean, the MLS in Cabo, in the Baja Sur, it's one of a kind it in is. all of Mexico. Yes. Well, after I opened up in 86, about 1990, there might have been four or five of us at the time. And it was the Wild West. Who were the five? Any of them still here? They are, they are still here. Uh, I think only one or two of them are here uh, at this point. Doug Christensen, my partner at the MLS. Uh, but some of them have gone. So I decided to corral the five of us one morning for a breakfast. 
And I said, you know, guys, we need to work together. This is mayhem. There was no such thing as a listing or... And we didn't really know what we were doing back then, you know? So we sat down and we decided that morning that we should form a MLS group. And that was the beginning with the five of us. And we would meet monthly and we would go to our Xerox copiers and we would copy off this week's listings and we all had a booklet. And so you'd come and pass out your five listings and we'd have our booklet. And most importantly, Nick, is I showed up in that meeting with a yellow pad and I had like five or six rules. This is the way we ought to behave. The first rule was commissions are 10%. (laughs) Nice. And it stayed that way for about 15 years, actually. I was, I was here when a lot of the listings were still 10%. Yeah, that was my fault. Here. Thank you. And so we started developing these rules to behave with each other. And we decided, you know, we ought to make the sellers give us a listing agreement. The sellers wanted nothing to do with it. They were actually confused. Like, if I sign that, did I just give you my property? No, 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 no. You're just letting me sell it. So Nick. What has happened over the years, you've watched it. We have grown the MLS from those original five. Uh, We finished out uh, December with 1,200 members in the MLS. And we are a statewide organization now. We have 150 brokerages in the MLS. And those five rules have turned into 20 pages. I know. In English and Spanish, and we take it seriously. We're self-policed. It's the most amazing organization in Mexico. We get calls from all over the country asking us, how did you guys do that? How do you coordinate it so well? And basically what I was concerned about early on, Nick, was if we don't, create security for these purchasers and these sellers. If we don't behave properly and do everything we can to make sure our transactions are 100% legal and conducted properly, then we're not going to have the kind of growth that we expect, especially this high-end marketplace that, that demand that kind of service. So that has been a game changer that all of us brokers who are competitors sit around the table and work so well together and we make our own rules and we abide by our rules and it's been tremendous growth and it's, it's just Not everyone wonderful. abides by all the rules. No, we have, a, we have a few and sometimes we invite them out. <laughs> invite uh, them out, I like that. <laughs> Well, I think that what you say is absolutely true, that to have professionalism, transparency, um, it's the cornerstone and the bedrock to give buyers and sellers the confidence that their investment's going to go somewhere, um, you know, up 100%. in terms of appreciation. And so I'm thankful that you and the group of five started that back in the 80s yeah. because our real estate market wouldn't be where it's at right now. When you look at other markets in Mexico, they're not, there's no one as advanced no. as we are. No. Um, and um, I get asked continually by developers or other agents in other areas, like how can you do that in, so right. we're now emerging yeah. in San Miguel de Allende. Yes. So Ronival is now present over there, but it's, yes. and that's a strong second home market it to is. Americans. Um, but they're still probably uh-huh. 1998 yeah. by Cabo standards. They have called us. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I see that in the probably next 10 years, you know, they're going to make huge advancements. And other areas like Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Vallarta. Vallarta. Yes. I think Vallarta is further along than a lot of the other areas. A little better, yes. Uh, but I, we'll, we'll see if they'll be able to create what we've created here. You know, a few years back, Nick, we came up and we coined this phrase, together we're gonna sell a billion. (laughs) That was like, I thought that was crazy. Now we weren't anywhere near there. We were just, yeah, we were a couple hundred million, which was quite impressive. Two years later, we changed the logo. Together, selling two billion. That's the impact 
that this MLS has had across our state. And you know, not for nothing, Nick, when you take that number, $2 billion worth of real estate investment, we have an enormous impact in this community. That $2 billion goes out into this construction in these gardens and those maids and those services. And in fact, 2% of it goes to the municipality. We have an acquisition tax. So they look at that and go, whoa, we have a $40 million revenue spins off that MLS. Uh, every year. Every year. That's a nice annuity. So they really count on that. And uh, we're at the $2 billion mark. What do you think the uh, Baja Sur real estate market's going in the next five years? I think what has happened is we used to be known as Cabo San Lucas. And then we grew up and became Los Cabos which was San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas and our famous corridor of the 20 miles between. What the world is realizing is that the state of Baja California Sur is so beautiful and so diverse, where we have our Pacific Ocean and our Sea of Cortez, that now you look at these five different points around our state of Todos Santos and La Paz and on the East Cape over in Los Barriles and La Rivera with Four Seasons and the Amman Hotel and San Jose and Cabo that now the entire state is being discovered. Yep, yep. And I think that we're going to see investors decide that they're so diverse, those areas in climate and, and, and in, the, in uh, each of those resorts. Some of them are very touristy, some of them very traditional like La Paz. I anticipate the next 20 years is going to be a strong growth cycle that we've been witnessing. Why not, Nick? Yeah. I mean. What are the challenges that you see? Because the evolution in your real estate career, mm -hmm. agent, broker, president of the MLS, founder of the yeah. MLS, and developer. So let's talk about the developer side of things. Yeah. Where do you see the challenges um, as more and more development comes yes. uh, to the whole state of Baja Sur? Uh, it keeps me up at night a little bit. Uh, it's happening so fast, Nick. We're challenged at the MLS, of course. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, as you just mentioned, going over to San Miguel de Allende, and other brokers from here are over there. I met with a friend over at the agency over there and Bernardo came to me after opening and he goes, oh, Michael, will you please come over to San Miguel Allende and fix this mess? What happens is practices on the mainland are quite different than what we've established here. So we get concerned when the developer comes from the mainland and they wanna join us, we go, whoa, 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 slow down. You may not want to because we have very strict rules. You have to put your money in escrow. You don't touch that money and all these contracts are signed properly and we request all these documents from you and a liter of blood, un litro de sangre. <laughs> and so some of them say, whoa, whoa, we don't, we don't do that at home. I go, well, you do that here. Yeah, in Mexico City, Guadalajara, Monterey, that's not how we sell real estate. But what's different here is we're selling to Americans and Canadians. And that level of expectation, 100%. transparency, and security is necessary. We want not only quality development, we want quality developers. We can't suddenly deteriorate the level that we've achieved. So that's one side of our concern. The other side of our concern is that all these wonderful young people coming in and joining is exciting, very exciting that we have this new, we have licensing now, we're, we're, we're licensed in the state of Baja Sur, we were the 17th state to finally get our licensing through, and we have all of these wonderful agents coming in, and we need, we need to rely on our brokers, that that training must take place, and we must continue to stay together, stay organized, and stay committed to the principles that have been successful for us. So, talking about developers mm -hmm. and keeping them in check and holding them to a high standard, Correct. right? Uh, let's talk about Tortuga Bay. Yes. Um, so phase two, it's already in construction. We can hear yes. the construction equipment right now, right. moving dirt. Um, what's planned in phase two? 
Well, in phase two, uh, we are developing two and three bedroom condominiums and penthouses with rooftop terraces and our ground floors with their own private plunge pools. We're filling it up with amenities. We're very heavily amenity based. I've been living here on the beach long enough to know what an owner wants living on a beachfront condo. Mm -hmm. And so one of our biggest benefits, some of our benefits of Tortuga is our location. First of all, we're in San Jose del Cabo, which is an absolute jewel. And in fact, I was down last night at Art Walk and it's just amazing the transformation of this picturesque colonial town that we have here. It's very popular now. So we're here in San Jose on the famous Zona Hotelera. We're wedged between two five-star resorts of the Viceroy Los Cabos and the Hyatt next to us. We're one block away from grocery stores and 12 restaurants all around us. So our location is, is very key. I overdevelop. I develop a really good product, a really good product. We're sitting here looking at a building that I built many years ago, and our guests say it looks brand new uh, because we built it right and we take care of our properties. Our pricing is phenomenal. As you mentioned, I bought the property a long time ago. Yeah, so the land cost was low. Yes, the year's land cost was free compared free. to today. Okay. Uh, I mean, just to give you an example, I'll tell you what had happened. I purchased all this land, eight acres on the beach for $5 million. Today it's 40. And if I had to put that 40 on those condominium numbers, they would be astronomically expensive. But because of that lower acquisition price on the land many years ago, the benefit translates to these new owners. So our condominiums are under a million dollars on the beach. Roughly, what percentage of the land value is the total project value if you're a developer? So if it was a 40, yes. if it was a $40 million land acquisition today, yes. how big of a project would it need to be? You are restricted by your density at top and typically land, you want to keep it into 30% of your selling price. So because they restrict us on the total density, you have to divide that high price against right. that fixed number right. of condos. So between 100, close to maybe even $200 million project you would need you to would have build to. out. And then that's going back to the purchaser and saying you need to pay for that land we bought. Correct. So this is the last chance for people to own a brand new beautiful condo on the beach. There's no <laughs> land left. And as we know, if someone wants to live on the beach in Los Cabos, they go down the corridor and it's more than five million to buy the condos and the houses, right? So the price is here? The price is here start at 840. They average in the 900s and we have a few that are up in the million range that are on the three bedroom penthouses. But we're all in there about 800 to a million five. So our, our initial sales are very strong. And the size of the two bedrooms and three bedrooms? Our two bedrooms run between 1,600 and 1,800 square feet, and our three bedrooms bump up to about 2,200 to 2,700. And how is that distributed inside and outside? Because we uh -huh. live both inside and outside we of do. our units. So our clients own the whole condo, so it goes from door right through to outside to terrace. I've been known always for our terraces. We've always overbuilt terraces on the developments I've built. This is not my first development, but on my other ones, you, as you know, over at Las Mañanitas as well, we like to oversize the terrace. People live outdoors. We all live outdoors. So the sliding pocket doors and the indoor-outdoor living, very popular. We loaded it up with amenities. We have several cascading swimming pools here and outdoor spa jacuzzis, and we have these wonderful barbecue areas. We're adding our fitness center. We're putting in pickleball courts, of course, so. Cool, and where will the pickleball courts go? Right here in phase two, behind phase two, and before phase three. Eventually, as I finish two, I'll move up to phase three, which is the, the last few condominiums. But one of the nice things about phase three is we will have a plaza along the boulevard up there. And I will have two restaurants anchoring the plaza and six shops 
uh, in the front. So our owners are going to have the luxury of just walking, staying on the property. Are you going to sell the commercial spaces or just rent them? I think I'll probably sell them. I'm not a big renter guy and uh, things that go on with needing to take them back if that doesn't happen. So I'm happy. I probably will sell them and I will be very particular about choosing who goes there and how those services benefit our owners more than anything, yes. It really is, so these two buildings that are down at the beach separately, if you were to ask me, phase two and phase one is all one phase. If I had done it immediately and the market didn't crash crash in 2008, you would see that it's one big U shape. So we have these two buildings out front. I'm now finishing the U. So essentially, one and we call it phase two, but it will, every single unit is directly on the beach. All of these in the back of the U, there's no one between them and the beach, the way it's designed. Ground level units, will they have private garden areas? They have a private garden and a private swimming pool, a plunge pool on half of them. So the garden levels, at the end of the condo comes their terrace, then comes a garden area and they have the option of having one with the plunge pool and a, and, a, and a lounge chair area, deck, or private garden area. There will be a total of 90. We're building half of them right now. We're focusing our sales and our bank loan into the half, and then about six months later, we'll roll over to the other half, and the whole thing catches up and we deliver in 24 months. Parking subterranean, how does that work? Parking is both subterranean and garages. So as a resident, people love having their garage. And so we sell garages separately from the condo. Unfortunately, I only have 30 garages for the 90 of us. The other 60 of us, after the 30 garage sales, will receive a parking space in the underground parking area. And one of the things that I do as a developer is I make sure that those parking spaces in those garages have tax ID personalities and we deed them to the condo. Got it. So it's not a paper assignment assignment to your parking place. No. I deed them in the condominium regime. So someone may own unit 101 and garage 10 and I put them together and give them their deed with both. And that underground parking Mm -hmm. is included in the price? or It is included in the price, and then the garages are $60,000. And on our first eight sales this past month, seven of them bought garages. Of course. Those are Those are primo on the beach, I mean, to have a garage. And they're big garages, a full suburban and all the storage area for the toys. And once we sell the 30, we won't talk about it, and everybody gets their underground parking space. One space per unit. One space per unit, and then I have a bunch of extra parking outside. I don't know why in Mexico, but we don't like parking for some reason, or developers don't. It's a nightmare here. Not only in commercial centers, but at all of our residential. It's like one is lucky, and sometimes not even one, and then where's the guest going to park? I see all those faults, and at my developments, I allocate a lot of space for that because I know once they're all in, you want to live comfortably and you want to have your guests over and your renters are renting a car, et cetera. We have a very strong rental demand, by the way, for beachfront condos as the number one desired rental in all of, yeah. of Airbnb. And just last month, Airbnb stated that the number one location in their system is San Jose del Cabo for beachfront. Rental, which was just fascinating to see that. Maybe because you can walk to everything. That's a big Grocery benefit. stores, restaurants. You don't have to stay inside of the community itself. No, and another point to that, Nick, we're on the community bike path. So in San Jose del Cabo, we have about 10 kilometers of bike path, and our town is only a mile away. So our owners have the luxury of coming out and jumping on their electric bike and off you go on your designated bike path down to the art walk or down to town. And, and, and that's very convenient, very convenient. Absolutely, I agree. When can we expect 
delivery of the first units in phase two? I am contracting 22 months. Now, don't tell anybody. I'm contracting 24 months. My contractor told me he could build it in 22. Okay. But don't tell anybody that. I'm writing 24. And that means that my sales here in January, I'll deliver next January 26. But I'm going to surprise them, most likely, and get them in for Christmas. Crystal ball. By the time you <laughs> deliver in 24 months, yeah. uh, what do you think percentage-wise um, value add buyers will get? Well, I know right out of the gate it's going to be 20% because I have those price breaks built in. So our first 20 purchasers are the lucky 20, I call them. And that's what we do always when we start new projects. We really appreciate those first 20 I mean, it's kind of nervous for those buyers. They're wondering, hey, there's nothing there. Are there still so, some opportunities to be there the is. first? There is. We are going to go with the first 20. Nine of the units are claimed. Okay. So we have uh, about 10 or 11 more opportunities. Okay. I think we have two or three sales <laughs> happening here this weekend. But there is an opportunity here for those first 20. Then I'm going to start incrementing up there. I predict that uh, just in my own increment, there'll be a 20% increase in value. And then the last ones is market. Yeah, dictated. The market dictated. The last ones are mine. Okay. And uh, there'll be no hurry on my part. So I usually price them up there to benefit my owners and liquidate them as they do. So. I have one more question before yeah. anyone in uh, here wants to ask questions or online. Okay. Um, what does the future hold for you? I mean, uh, I mean uh, you're the president of the MLS. <laughs> Um, you're the broker owner of Baja yes. Properties. You're the developer of Tortuga Bay in like four or five years. Are you still in real estate? Uh, I think so. I it's mean, your, son, your son is in the it's business, My right? son, John, works with me, yes. Uh, John's working here at Baja Properties and will take over those reins. I think I will always have my hand in development. It's so much fun. Uh, I love the creativity of development. And I love the excitement of the purchasers. I mean, it's, 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 for me, it's an addiction to, to be able to bring those people in and to watch them enjoy their ownership and the families coming and the relationships you develop. Them. Why would I ever stop that if my health allows? So the MLS, one day I have to pass it off. So I'm looking towards you, Nick. So if we could take a vote now live, all in favor. Oh, oh my gosh, I don't know about that. That's a lot of work. It's a funny... It, it, it's unpaid, oh, you it's get horrible. all the complaints, it's and horrible. it's just a nightmare. I don't know how you do it. It's funny, every year at the annual assembly of the MLS, I get up and say, okay, we have to vote on the new board of directors. Every volunteer raised their hand and they're all in their phone suddenly. You know, there's like nobody there. And they say, okay, well, we'll just re-elect uh, you guys. Which, you know, Nick, that is an honor. These are my peers. These are my competitors. Yep. And it's truly an honor uh, to have them say that we want you to lead uh, our industry. Not me, the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I have these four people. There's such depth knowledge. The debates that we have, it's quite an exciting weekly meeting. I mean, we're in there debating nonsense that you guys are doing out there and figuring out how we're going to fix that. It's a very stimulating meeting that we have each week. I'm glad to be part of it. But at some point, it has to be passed off. But I'd like to remain in development. All right, we'll open it up to people online. Is there any questions any out there? People on the project or just general real estate questions, MLS questions, as long as it's nice questions. Yeah. Because it can get very heated. Well, um, and I appreciate you coming over today, Nick, and all your crew here at Ronnie Vault. It's been wonderful watching the success of your brokerage and what you've done with that. It's really fascinating. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I, I follow the footsteps, right? Congratulations. And so it's, um, it. it's nice to see um, predecessors that have forged the way, and I appreciate that. Much success to you. Likewise. Um, questions about the project? After this, we're going to tour yep. anything we'll take that a we look can. around. Okay. And we have materials and brochures to hand out to everybody. Dog park. Yes, we're dog friendly. You know, everybody, our customers have dogs. I mean, everybody's nowadays dog friendly. So we are dog friendly here at Tortuga Bay. Uh, and that's been a big bonus for our owners. We have a wonderful dog park going in here in phase two. So we'll have an area for the dogs and exercise and fun and a dog shampoo station and grooming station and toys to play with. 
so that comes in as part of our amenities. Mm. And we're right here in the sand. We're right on the beach. You should see us all in the morning and at sunset. At sunrise, it's like we might as well have a homeowner's meeting. We're all out there with our coffee and our dogs. And then later in the afternoon, we're all out there with a glass of wine. wine. It's so lovely living here. You just grab your coffee. You go down the elevator. You walk out here in this paradise. And you're right here in beautiful San Jose del Cabo on the beach. Anyone have any buyer tours. You have several of your agents scattered yes. around. So yes. can you, we raise our hands who at Baja Properties tours? Some of them are in here okay. and we have, uh, we have a great staff that have been making these sales. We have lots of activity. It's, it's, we have a lot of walk-in traffic because of the location we're in. So we have several tours a day. We're looking for you Ronnie Val people to come join us. We have $100 million of inventory agents so that's about $6 million worth of commissions, and those are the best checks I sign every week. Gladly. Gladly sign that. That's my favorite check to sign. Commissions to everybody. So come on over and get in on a... I guess the question, a lot of times when I speak with a group, I always ask the question, and I ask it to our purchasers, does anybody want to live at the beach? And who doesn't? And so when we pose that question to our, our uh, potential purchasers, as you all know, we have not had beachfront condos available for several years. Just resales. It's these reselling of the older products, and then the clients have to go remodel them. Uh, now we have fresh, brand new villas coming online here at Tortuga Bay Phase 2, and the most asked question in real estate is, do you have any beachfront condos? And in the past, we really haven't, and now we do, the last ones. So we welcome all of you to come on over. We're open seven days a week, eight days a week. We're here. We're open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Come right on site. Yes. Hi. Uh, what are the payment schedules? Okay, so in... Payment schedules for those Payment online. schedule was the question. So during pre-construction sales, the whole point is, is we're asking our investors to pay as they go, pay as we build. So we start out with a 40% deposit upon the signing of the formal buy and sell agreement that we refer to as the promissory agreement. So they put a $10,000 deposit down with you in two weeks, four weeks, I prepare the agreement. We sign the agreement with the 40% down. I pay all of you on 40%. And then it's 20, 20, 20. 20 when the foundation's done, 20 when the structure's up, 20 when I give you the keys and hand the delivery over to you somewhere between 22 and 24 months. So that's how it is, 40, 20, 20, 20. Are you relying on the sales in phase two to pay for phase two? Not 100%. Uh, on a big building like this, in everything I've developed, I have pre-sold before I finish building it. My entire career. I think it will happen here again. However, this is a big building. And I'm not comfortable not having the security that that whole building's going up regardless of sales. So to answer your question, Sean, yes. I went out talking to bankers about lending. And bankers don't traditionally lend that much to condominiums. They like hotels. Three of the banks were chasing me, going, yeah, we want that loan. It's here on the beach. It's San Jose. It's you, Michael. And now I'm signing with the bank Intercam. Some of you are familiar with Intercam here that offers mortgage financing to our purchasers, and they have offered me the construction loan. So I have in place a line of credit. So if any given month my pre-sales don't meet my contractor's request, then I'll go ahead and lean on the line of credit. But it's fully funded. I would not put my pre-purchasers at risk, not ever.
You mentioned financing with developments. That's a very interesting topic. Yes. And a lot of our buyers like to use financing to purchase because it's a great tool. Yes. Considering, you know, interest rates now in Mexico can be around 6 or 7%, which is very close to their return on investment. Mm -hmm. And so if a client comes to you and wants to use some financing tool to purchase their condo, is there a way that you can work that out with them where you're carrying more until the end and allowing them to finance upon the signing of title? Yes, and that's a good question, and we do do that. So those of you connected, Scott Purcell asked a question, um, the prescribed payment plan of 40 20, 20, 20 um, doesn't work for buyers that need bank financing. So Michael's gonna answer right. that question. Right, so we do offer mortgage financing to our pre-purchasers. And most of you are familiar with how that works here in Los Cabos. We have essentially two mortgage lenders right now, right? We have the gr group over here at Moxie, and we have Intercam, the bank that I work with. And so they offer our clients 25-year mortgage financing and no prepayment penalty. Our owners can pay it off on any month, any year that they want to. And in those cases where our purchaser wants the financing, all they do is give me the 40% down payment and that's it, no other obligation. At delivery day, the bank sends me the other 60% and the client starts their payment a month later after delivery, and they go on and make their mortgage payments for the full 25-year term or pay it off at sale or any time they'd like. We do continue to encourage them to find financing up north against northerly assets because the U.S. interest rates are a little bit better than the Mexican interest rates. But we do have a couple of purchasers already that have taken advantage of having the Intercam mortgage loan. So we want sales and we want that, we want that investor as well. Yes. Anything else this morning? Well, in that case, then I would say happy selling. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate Thank you, Brent. Brent, I'm not Brent. Oh, sorry. Brent's right there. Brent's right there. He's connected. Nick. <laughs> Nick. There's Brent. I've been wondering where he is. How come he gets to stay there? Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nick Fong Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Ronaval Real Estate. And follow Nick on Instagram at Nick Fong underscore Ronaval. Ready to find your Baja dream home? Check out the latest property listings at ronaval.com or findmexicohouses.com. Hasta luego.